um, the unilateral U.S. sanctions, they're called sanctions, really, they're, they're, acts of, they're acts of aggression. There's three heads in which they're mostly illegal. And I, I discuss in the book, in the, in the chapter there on sanctions, that if we look back at the case of South Africa, when sanctions were against South Africa, there was a whole political process to make those sanctions legitimate against apartheid South Africa, which included getting the consent from the South African people who were going to be affected by it. None of that was done with this. So there's a political line of legitimacy and illegitimacy there. And there's a, there's a legal line of illegitimacy here too, because the sanctions against these independent countries as against Cuba, as against Venezuela, as against Nicaragua, for example. There's more than 20 countries that have these sanctions now. They specifically aim at political coercion, which is against international conventional law. They often aim to specifically to harm entire populations. There's a criminal element to that. Um, and in the past, it was, it was done rather secretly, you know, in relation to the sanctions against Cuba. Over years, documents came out that they aimed to starve the people, make them desperate, and hope that they'd rise up against the government. Indeed, they were desperate because their own assessment was the revolutionary government in Cuba was very popular, and the only way to undermine that was to destroy people's standard of living, basically. Well, you saw the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, repeating it more openly in relation to Iran when he said, well, uh, if the people of Iran want to eat, they better you know, change their political system, you know, which is effectively a, a criminal standover uh, course of action. The third leg of illegality is that they, these sanctions aim to damage the rights of third parties. They specifically affect people, not just, they don't just affect Iran, they'll be used against the Europeans if the Europeans trade with Iran, for example, that's why the European Union has been very weak in trying to um, maintain its commitment to the, to the nuclear agreement, which, was specific, which part of which the benefit for Iran was to lift the sanctions that, that existed there before. So that's on the legal side. Then you've got the, the, the political illegitimacy side of things. So the, he, this is a very dangerous uh, part of the war. It should be considered, I suggest, part of this um, broad spectrum, full spectrum war against the region because economic sanctions aim to starve populations and deprive them of life-saving medicines, cancer medicines and so on. This is the case. The, the WHO has been reporting it in Syria, for example. It's similar with Iran, even though to some extent Iran is, has tremendous local capacity, but still everyone imports to some extent. And now the Trump administration has tightened those restrictions in some way against the advice of the World Health Organization and the international community which is calling for greater cooperation to combat the coronavirus. Um, so they quite deliberately want to prevent international cooperation to contain the contagion in Iran which has one of the worst outbreaks. Um, uh, it's going to be overtaken by the US very shortly because the, the rise in infections in the US is, is coming on very strongly. But, Effectively, the US is deliberately trying to worsen the health situation, the public health situation in Iran. Uh, 